everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to Yarn Purpose. Today I'm back with another coffee ketchup. Hey everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back. I'm ready to drink some coffee and talk about all the things I've been knitting and working on over the last month. Iced coffee, you know the drill as always. A little heavy on the cream today, but I'm not complaining. Um, okay, so I have so much to talk about. I feel like this last month has been crazy busy in a good way. I have definitely got my knitting mojo back big time. Um, so I've been working on a lot of things. Um, I feel like this might finally be the coffee ketchup that's going to be a little bit longer than the other ones. It's funny because all of the coffee ketchups, when I go to like edit them, they always like every time end up being like, in the 22 to like 24, 25 minute range. Um, I guess we'll see what happens this time, right? Um, okay, so I have some finished objects to show you, works in progress. Um, I've started some new crafts, um, so I'm gonna show you that. I have a little bit of yarn that I um, have acquired. Um, I think I'm going to actually talk about the books I've been reading this time. I've been reading actually kind of a lot lately. Um, and I know that a lot of like knitters and crocheters also enjoy reading a lot. So I'm going to throw that in at the end. And, um, at the end, I'll also talk a little bit about work. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. First off, I am wearing today my comfort fade Cardi. Um, I've showed you this before when I finished it. Um, but I don't know. I've just been, I've been wearing it a lot lately. Um, yeah, so I'll leave a link to the pattern down below and the yarn I used. It was, um, Neighborhood Fiber Co. Um, but yeah, I've been actually like wearing this a lot. Um, which is weird because like I knit, like when I knit my sweaters, a lot of times I weirdly don't end up like wearing them a lot. I guess when I knit the Hido Fude, I need to find that one. I think it's in my closet, uh, like in a tote. Um, the Hido Fude I knit a few years ago, that one I wore a lot. Um, but some of the other things I've knit over the years, I, I don't know, I guess maybe, maybe I am a process knitter. I don't know. I feel like when it comes to sweaters, I enjoy the process of knitting them, but I don't always end up like wearing the finished object a lot, but this one I am. I, plus this like maroon color is like, I swear it's like my, this like deep wine red is like my power color or something. Anyway, enough about this sweater. Let's get into the actual other finished objects, which I have, OMG, I have another sweater. Okay, let me just rearrange a little bit here. Um, yeah. I uh, finished the Swancho. I have not taken pictures of me wearing it yet. Um, I'm waiting for my husband to um, do that for me just because it's kind of hard to take, take your own pictures. Um, but yeah, I finally finished the Swancho. It only took me a year. I started it in March of last year, um, and I just finished it. So um, as far as modifications go, um, I changed a little bit of the color work, like here and here down here. These were more like big, like rectangly blocks of color. Um, I didn't, like I liked it, but I didn't love it. So I just kind of changed, I mean, it kind of looks like an eye, but that's okay. I like it. Um, and that's all that matters that I like it. Right. Um, and then I'm trying to think, I think the bottom called for one by one ribbing at the bottom, I guess probably so it can match the top, but I decided to go with two by two ribbing. I just like how it looks better. And then the sleeves, um, I did not knit the full length of sleeve. I can't remember now. Um, maybe you knit seven inches of ribbing or something for the sleeves. I just did 20 rounds. So I don't know, that's maybe like three inches or so. Um, cause in general, even though this, this sweater is a long sleeve sweater, um, in general, I don't, I'm hot all the time. And so, um, I felt I'd wear it more if the sleeves were shorter. Um, and so, yeah, I really love it. Um, so it definitely is like oversized. It is like a poncho with teeny little arms. Um, so, you know, that's not a sweater that's for everybody. I know that, but I love it and that's all that matters. And so, um, my husband actually told me that this is, this is his favorite thing I've ever made. He just thought it was so cool, which I thought was nice. Like I do love it too. Um, you know, I'm, I don't do a ton of color work. Um, and I definitely didn't do the best job. I didn't do a great job blocking it either. <laughs> um, 
but I do, I do love it. I love my color combo. Um, I'll leave a link to the colors that I use down below. Um, the yarn is Barocco Vintage DK. So um, I definitely used a more affordable yarn with this one because I wasn't sure. This was a just have to knit it. You know, it was kind of a popular pattern, especially last year. Um, it was one of those, I just wanted to knit it and see. And, um, so I didn't want to spend a ton of money on a yarn. I wasn't sure. Um, but I also think my sister will love it. I think she's going to want to borrow it too. So that's the Swancho. So I will, um, get my husband to take a couple pictures of me wearing it. And then I will have those. Um, I'm sure I'll post them on Instagram. Um, I'm Jen Lucas designs over there or on my project page on Ravelry. Um, and I'm j just Jen Lucas on Ravelry. So anyway, that's the Swancho. It's so pretty. I could stare at it all day. I need to do more color work. It's just ugh, so pretty, so pretty. So that is the main thing I finished. Um, really, honestly, that's the only thing I finished in the last month. But I did want to show you my January and February socks. You might remember from the last coffee catch-up that I did not have the socks because they were in my husband's car. And so I have them now. I took them out of his car. And so I just thought I would show them to you just so you could see. Um, I don't even know if I've posted them on Instagram. Kind of got kind of got bad about Instagram over the last month or so. But um, anyway, so these were my January socks. Um, the yarn is uh, Nomadic Yarns. It was Twisty Sock. And the colorway on this is Diagon Alley. So I do have, I do have the two socks here. Um, so I just knit them um, top down using a German short row heel. I have a pattern for, this is my sweet and simple sock pattern. Um, it's just a plain sock with a German short row heel basically. Um, so those were the socks that I had picked that random yarn for January. And then I finished the February ones too. And this was also Nomadic Yarns. And the colorway here is um, gum drop buttons. And so again, I did just top down German short row heel. So, um, yeah, this was also a twisty sock. So those, um, are done. I'll be sticking these in the sock drawer. Although now that it's getting warmer, I, I really only wear the, uh, hand knit sock. Well, it's still, it'll still be a little cold, but after like maybe a little bit into April I do, but then, um, I don't really wear hand knit socks like in the summer or anything. I'm a flip flop girl. So anyway, those are that. That is the uh, socks. So I guess that's really it for um, finished objects, I feel like. Um, yeah, I don't see anything else sitting around. So now we will get into whips, works in progress. Okay, whips, let's get into it. I've definitely started some things here. Okay. So first up, after... After I finished the Swancho, I immediately wanted to start another sweater. This is very unlike me. I don't normally knit a ton of sweaters. I've often said that I only knit one sweater a year, but like I finished this one in like maybe October, November. Then I finished the Swancho this month and now I've started another sweater. So I don't know, I guess out of nowhere I've become a sweater knitter, which is cool. Um, I don't know, I feel like now I'm finally sort of realizing like what style of sweater I like, like I'm getting better at like making my own adjustments to sweater patterns. So maybe that's why I'm getting a little more into it. Um, Cause I feel like the more sweaters I'm knitting, the better fit I'm getting, if that makes sense. Um, so anyway, I did start another sweater and the sweater I have started, there is, I swear, I need to take a picture of like the mountain of stuff that's over here to show you. Um, it doesn't look very organized. Okay, here we go. The sweater I have started is just this little bit right here. Um, and it is the Brunswick sweater by Marie Green. I think I actually do have like a full size picture here. I can show you. Hold on, let me find it. Oh, here we go. So it is this Brunswick. And I'll, of course, always leave a link to it down below. Um, so this yarn I had purchased at um, Indie Untangled last year and the yarn I am using is Magpie Fibers. 
Um, and I've never actually knit with Magpie Fibers until now. It's very nice. Um, the yarn base is Swanky Sock, which is 80% Superwash Merino, 10% Cashmere, 10% Nylon, and it is 378 yards for 115 grams. So the speckly one here, the colorway is Smoke and Mirrors. And then the solid one, um, that's kind of this like pond scummy color, um, is Strange Brew. So these are the two that I'm putting together. And so the body of the sweater is going to be in the speckle. And then the color work at the bottom is going to be in this. Um, and so, yeah, so I have just started it. Um, you start by working it back and forth and then you join in the round. So I don't have too much. This is sort of the back because the, so you can see it's really pretty. I really love how this is coming out. Um, these are not normally colors I would choose, but like, I, like, again, I would like always sort of pick this like wine color to wear, but oh, I just love, I just love these colors together. Um, and then I am alternating skeins. Like you can even see here in the video, like these are the same colorway and the, you can definitely, this one looks like it has more speckles than this one. So I am alternating skeins to make sure that. Everything just looks nice and uniform and even. Um, and so what I love about this one is that it's a short sleeve sweater. Um, so I think that this one will be perfect for spring. Um, assuming that I finish it in the spring, maybe it'll be the perfect sweater for spring of 2020. I don't know. You know how it goes. Swancho took me a year, so we'll see. Um, so that is the sweater that I've been working on. Um, and I am, let's see, I'm using a size two needle for the body. So the pattern calls for a size three and a size two, but I'm going to use a size two and a size one. So, um, I'm, I'm a loose knitter. So in general, um, I do need to go down, um, a needle size or two when I'm knitting other people's patterns. Um, okay. So that was the sweater and then my March socks. So my March socks, um, we picked the yarn last time. And um, we'll pick the yarn for the April socks in just a minute. Um, I have not finished them yet, um, but I have one done and the second one started. Um, and so this yarn is White Birch Fiber Arts in the Purple Haze colorway. Um, and you'll recall I did do the... Um, I did do a similar yarn from White Birch Fiber Arts where it was blue here instead of purple. I've knit like three pairs of socks with that. Um, and so yeah, so those are the March socks. So um, I'll probably be finishing these up in the next week or so. Um, I'm going to be going up to Fargo to visit my brother and his family. So that always gives me a lot of knitting time when I'm not driving. Um, but what's cool about these socks is I actually am doing a different pattern than what I normally do. Um, and so the pattern I am doing is, let me see, I have it written down here. It is Non-Euclidean by Sarah Jordan. And so um, I saw this pattern um, during the Lots of Socks Knit Along that was being hosted by Paper Daisy Creations, Lisa Ross. Um, and I had seen this pattern on Instagram and I was like, ooh, this looks interesting. I want to try it. So I'll take this off of the little sock blocker too so you can see. So this heel is just so different than anything I had ever seen before that I just had to try it. Um, and so what you end up doing is this is a top-down sock and you end up creating almost like this triangle here for the heel. And then here's like kind of where you're doing like your short rows kind of, it's kind of like doing one gigantic heel turn. Um, so it was super fun to knit. Um, I'll admit the sock is a little big on me, um, but I did, um, I used 64 stitches. Normally when I knit a sock for myself, I do 60, um, but the pattern, I believe it either had a 56 or 64 stitch option. Um, and I didn't really want to try to only do 60 when I was trying to do this new heel construction. I wanted to just follow the pattern. Um, so I did do 64. So it's a, it is a little bit baggy. Um, but I don't know. I think next time when I do it, maybe I would just try to either do 60 and just like work it out or do the 56. But it was really, really fun to do. I'm excited to get to the heel on the second sock. Um, so yeah, so that 
is non-Euclidean. I will leave a link to the pattern down below. And so since we're talking about the March socks, let's go ahead and pick the yarn for April. Time to pick some yarn. I have my bag here. Somebody had suggested that I like just write numbers down and um, like choose that way rather than trying to stick my hand in my tiny bag, but I didn't do that, so I'm gonna stick my hand in the bag. So to remind you, um, at the beginning of the year, I took 12 different sock yarns that I had on the shelf, threw them in the bag, and then every month or so, I am picking a new one, and then that will be the next pair of socks that I knit. So I still have lots of good stuff in here. Um, so I'm gonna first go and just sort of give it a little, little mixing here. I guess I could mix this like before I come and do my video, but what fun is that, right? Okay. All right, so I gave it a mix. All right, okay, a little more mixing. Okay, there we go. All right, there we go. All right, I'm gonna stick my hand in and whatever I get, that's my April socks. Ready, go. Ah, another nomadic yarns. I told you guys, there was a lot of nomadic yarns in here. So um, I guess we're a little heavy on nomadic yarns at the beginning of the year, but there is nothing wrong with that. So here is my April yarn. Another nomadic yarns, and this one is a twisty sport. So this is sport weight yarn, and the colorway is chill is in the air. And this is 80% um, merino, superwash merino, 20% nylon, 328 yards. So chill is in the air is my colorway um, for April. So I'm excited. I haven't used the twisty sport in a minute. So there we go. That's the April sock yarn. Okay, so let's see. Do I have any other works in progress to share with you? No, I don't. That's it. Um, okay, so now I guess we'll talk about stash acquisitions. Um, okay, so first of all, I went to the, um, I'm looking around to see, I feel like there should be more yarn. Oh yeah, there's more down there. Okay, so stash acquisitions. I went to the Pittsburgh Knit and Crochet Show, or also known as now the Pittsburgh Creative Arts Festival. Um, I was teaching there a couple weeks ago with my friend Heather Zepetti and a bunch of other great teachers. It was a really great weekend. We had so much fun. It was great getting to see everybody. Um, and I did actually have a little bit of time to do some shopping. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I got. So the first thing I got was, and um, it's probably Heather's fault because she got a bag first, um, is I got this project bag from Star Knits. Um, her website is starknits.net. I'll, of course, leave a link. Um, but I could not... I could not resist. Here, I'll show you this side because there's no plastic. Um, it's scientists. It's like girl scientists. So very, very cute. I used to work in a lab before um, I worked at my business full time. So obviously I big time needed this. Big time needed this bag. So it's very cute. Um, and so the front has a clear pocket here. Um, they, there's like these little rings on the side and then the inside, there's like some business cards in there, but then the inside does have, um, they're just open pockets. They don't zip, but open pockets. So it's a nice big bag. Definitely could get a sock or two in there. Definitely a shawl. So this is her, um, pocket bag. So obviously because there's a pocket, so. Got some scientists, scientist girls there. Very, very cute. Really like that. So I picked that up at the Pittsburgh Creative Arts Festival. And then um, I also got some yarn from Leading Men Fiber Arts, um, even though I'm in Illinois and they're in Illinois. And so I do see them a lot. Um, I love their yarn. I use it all the time. Um, and so I did pick up some yarn from them. So the first one is I got these two here to do a new design with. And this is their new Broadway base, which is a non-superwash merino. But, I mean, this is like, this feels really nice um, for non-superwash, you know. I mean, this is like really squishy, really, really soft. So the blue colorway is Tranquil, and the red is Poison Apple. Um, and it's fingering weight and 436 yards. And so I'm going to put these together into some kind of shawl at some point. 
I really love these together. Heather, um, like I said, was with me. Heather's a petty all weekend, and so she sort of pointed me in the direction of these two. So very excited to make a shawl out of that. And then I bought these two here. They are their Showstopper gradient sets. I actually got two. Um, this pastel rainbow one is Cactus Garden Lanterns. And then the gray one is London Fog. And so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these. In talking with Heather, we thought maybe it'd be cool to put them together and like almost do like some kind of shawl that went from like the dark gray to the light gray, but then like have the, um, like sort of the pastel rainbow part at the end. Like that could be a very cool shawl. Maybe I'll knit somebody else's pattern with them. I don't know, but um, I do love the Showstopper yarn. I've used that a bunch. It's fingering weight. And so each one of these kits comes with um, 552 yards total. So it is six mini gram, no, it's mini gram, six 20 gram mini skeins. So in each one. So I have quite a bit of yarn here. So that's what almost, that's like 1100 yards of yarn that I have here total. So um, I don't know what I'm going to make with those, but um, yeah, they just needed to go into the stash. So that's what I picked up while at the Pittsburgh Creative Arts Festival. Um, and then the other day I found myself at the craft store. I went to Joanne and um, I was picking up supplies for um, a different craft, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, but while I was there, I um, also picked up some yarn. Um, and what I ended up buying was this Lion Brand cupcake. Uh, hello, it's kind of like a rainbow. It's not like totally. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess there's not like green green in here, but kind of. I think I'm going to crochet a shawl with this or something. I don't know. I bought two it is 590 yards. It's 100% acrylic. Um, let's see. what They recommend like a size 5 needle and a size H crochet hook. So I don't know. This is like finger, heavy fingering to sport weight maybe. Um, but yeah, I just like, I was like walking like through to go check out and I saw this and I was like, hmm. I'm a sucker for rainbow yarn, you know. So anyway, I picked those two up. Um, very affordable. I think that these were only like six bucks, um, like six bucks a ball or something. Don't quote me on that. I think that's what it cost. Um, and so for 590 yards for $6, you really can't beat that. So um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna make with it, but um, yeah, that one's going into the stash. So that's really it for stash acquisitions. Um, so yeah, I got some good yarn this month. Um, let's see, what else do we want to talk about? Okay, well, let's talk about other crafts and also what I'm reading. Okay, other crafts. I have for a very long time wanted to do English paper piecing. I know very little about it. I just know that it looks really cool and that I wanted to do it. And so um, last weekend, um, I just had sort of like this free lazy weekend. My husband actually was gone on like a little boys road trip thing. Um, and so I just like had the whole weekend to just like craft and read books and do it, do whatever I want, ordered, ordered a pizza, you know, except with mushrooms on it. Cause he doesn't like mushrooms. Um, and so since I had sort of this like chill, relaxing weekend, I got thinking, I'm like, you know what? I've been thinking about this English paper piecing for quite some time. I'm just going to like go to Joanne and see if I can find what I need to do it. So I like watched a couple really quick YouTube videos and then just took myself to the craft store and bought what I thought I needed. So, um, so far so good though. Um, so English paper piecing is sort of this like hand quilting. I might be using all the wrong terms. I know very little about sewing and quilting so I'm sorry if I'm like using the wrong terms but it's like hand like hand quilting you're like making your little pieces by hand so I picked up these hexagons here they're paper you can make your own um but I wasn't gonna make my own I just bought these so this um I still have one op unopened one I bought two because a lot of stuff was like buy one get one free last weekend at the craft store. So these um, are 1.5 inch hexagons. 
that you can buy. Again, you can make your own if you want to, for sure. You don't have to like buy these, but I bought them. So I got the 1.5 inch hexagon. And then I bought um, a bunch of these fabrics, like bundles. Again, you could like buy your own fabric and cut it and stuff. Um, but I just bought several of these um, packs of fabric. Um, so I got one that have just, you can kind of see there, some different in there and then I bought um, some white ones as well here so here's some white ones that I bought and these they just have like little designs on them but they're white um, and then what you do is um, you basically take the fabric and put it around oh gosh I feel like if I did this wrong sorry I watched some YouTube videos um, you basically put the fabric um, around the hexagon and just like I mean, you can glue them, but I didn't want to glue them. And my friends that have done it have kind of like used like basting stitches or like tack stitches or I, I have no idea. You just like sew it so you're holding the fabric down um, to make the hexagon. And then what you can do is I kind of just was practicing here. Um, you sew them together. Um, and you just, I just kind of like whip stitched them. You can see cause I used white and also I'm terrible at sewing. Um, you sew them together and then once, um, like once you have the, um, all your hexagons sewn together, you can kind of pull the paper out. You're left with this like patchwork type fabric. Um, if you don't follow Stacy Trock on Instagram, she, she does a lot of English paper piecing, um, she didn't like makes really cute like rainbow looking ones um but anyway so i just something that i've been interested in trying and so um yeah on last saturday i like went and got the stuff and rented a movie bohemian rhapsody in case you care hadn't seen it so um put on a movie um and just went to town so i have um i've made a bunch of hexagons here um, and then I just kind of wanted to practice sewing them together. So I did that. So I have everything here just like in a very messy tote situation. Um, but this is just something like I just want to practice and I don't, I don't have no idea what I'm going to make with these. Um, I feel like a lot of people make things like placemats and like table runners and things like that with them. I, I have no idea. I'm currently just making hexagons and sewing them together and we'll see what happens. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess you could like sew them all together until it was the size of a quilt if you wanted to. Um, I don't know that with my first one that that's what I'm going to do. Um, but yeah. And then like, I mean, you can go down a whole rabbit hole with this. Like there's all different shapes you can do. Like hexagons, I think are probably the most common. Um, but then I like started like looking on the internet, like you can really do this with a lot of different shapes. So Anyway, I guess English paper piecing might be my new hobby. It's, it actually is really fun. Like it, it was really nice just sort of getting into the rhythm of like making the hexagons. It was pretty mindless and I don't know, just something different to do. Like the only, to me, the only tricky part is, um, I, I feel like I'm reaching an age where I might need like cheaters, um, like I need a lot of light and like, I was like really like having to look very close. Like I was really having like a hard time, like, especially with the whip stitches, um, you know, so I don't know, um, you know, but it is very like sort of like delicate work, but it was, it's really fun. So, um, uh, I'll leave a link down below to a couple of the tutorials I watched. They were from crafty pod. Um, and they were very quick, very short videos that really sort of gave me the information that I needed to get started on this. Um, I'm, there are tons of videos out there. There's books, everything. Um, I just went the route of watching a couple YouTube videos and then decided to give it a try. Um, okay. So that's sort of my other crafting. Um, and then I thought this time I would talk a little bit about what I've been reading lately. Um, really at the beginning of the year, um, I mean, maybe it was a new year's resolution. I don't know, but I told myself I wanted to try to be better about reading more. I love to read. Um, I do listen to books. I like to physically read books. Um, but I told myself I was going to try to make a little more time for it in 2019. I've been doing pretty good so far. Um, I kind of go in spurts where like I read like four books in like the span of two weeks and then I don't read for like three weeks. And that is, you know, that's sort of, sort of my reading process, but I have been on a reading kick lately. So I just thought, I don't know that I'll always include what I'm reading at the end. 
um, sort of towards the end of the podcast, but I don't know. If you're curious, I'm going to tell you what I'm reading. If not, you can skip along to the next part or I'll see you next time. Um, okay, so um, as far as books that I've been listening to, um, I listened to Puddin' by Julie Murphy. Um, it's the second book um, that comes after Dumplin', and Dumplin' was a... Uh, was made into a Netflix movie. And so I had wanted to watch the Netflix movie, but then I wanted to read the book first. So I had read Dumplin', then I watched the movie, and I really, I, the book was way better than the movie, as is usually the case, right? So, um, but the movie was good too, but the, the book was way better. Um, and so I really liked the book, so then I listened to Puddin'. So that is the um, audiobook I recently finished, and now I'm listening to The Scarlet Letter. Um, I, I'm really, you will find out. I am kind of all over the place with the kind of books that I like. Um, and I also like to try to mix in sort of classics. Like I'm always telling people, like I try to mix in books like every fourth or fifth book that they're books that I either read in high school, was assigned to read in high school, but didn't read in high school. Um, books that one would be assigned to read in high school, but maybe for whatever reason, my English classes never read those books. Um, or just like classic books that like everybody's read, but I haven't read. Scarlet Letter, I did, was assigned to read in high school and did read, um, but it's been a long time. So, um, I decided that was like, it's a pretty short audio book too. I, I don't like my audio books to be longer than 12 hours is about what I can handle. I find if they get much longer than that, I don't know, like I want to enjoy my time reading my audio books, but sometimes if they get a lot longer than that, um, I find myself just like, I don't know, zoning out or something. So, um, the Scarlet Letter is really short. I think it's like six hours or something. Um, so I've been listening to that currently. Um, but I'm always kind of like listening to an audio book, but then I'm also like reading a physical book, whether that's a physical book or like on my Kindle or something. Um, I just kind of like, ha like to have both going at the same time. So usually I have one audio book going and then one physical book that I'm reading. So um, the book I most recently finished is um, The Proposal by Jasmine Guillory. Um, I had read the first book that's on here, The Wedding Date, last year, and it was so good. Um, the back of this book says that these are contemporary romance, so if, like chick lit, basically. Um, so um, I read The Wedding Date last year. It was so, so good. And so this is the second book, The Proposal. There is a third one. I think it's coming out in July, The Wedding Party. I will be getting that immediately to read. Um, so if you sort of like those contemporary romance books, um, definitely um, check this out. Um, you don't need to read the first book, The Wedding Date, to read the proposal, but they're both good. So you might as well read both. So I just recently finished that one. And then, um, I'm currently reading an American marriage by Tayari Jones. Um, so <laughs> I have this weird thing that when, um, it's always when I'm traveling a lot that I tend to read a lot. Um, like I like to read on the airplane in the airport or be listening to a book. So I kind of got into this weird habit, which this is like, kind of an expensive habit because at the airport books are not cheap but if I finish a book while I'm traveling I will buy a new book at the airport um so I had finished this while I was um traveling for the Pittsburgh Creative Arts Festival <laughs> so then on my way home I picked up this book which had been in my um good read sort of like to-do list or want to read list for a long time um, so I'm, I don't know, I'm maybe about halfway through this one. It's very good. So, um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it so far, even though I'm only halfway through. So I'm sure in the next few days I'll have this one completely read. So, um, yeah, that's what I've been reading. Um, yeah, so I'm really like all over the place with what I like to read. I also like to read like autobiographies, particularly if it's like a celebrity. I, I don't know. Um, so yeah, I, I like to read all different kinds of books, but that's what I've been reading lately. Um, and if you do enjoy hearing what I'm, what I have been reading, like, let me know. And also let me know what you've been reading. I'm always looking for new books. Like, like to me, the Goodreads app is sort of like, it's like, it's really, it's like Ravelry for books. Um, like I love at night sometimes when I'm in bed, like going on Goodreads and like, just like looking at different books that I would might want to read much like you would go on Ravelry and look at what patterns you might want to knit or crochet. So, um, yeah, I would love to know what you're reading. I'm like always like, I always have like a brain dump page in my, um, planner every month and it's just basically full of 
patterns, knitting and crochet patterns I want to look up, and then like books I want to go look up on Goodreads to see what they're about. So um, anyway, if you enjoyed, again, learning about like the books I'm reading, let me know. Because that's something that when I am sort of on a reading kick, I'd be happy to include here on the coffee ketchup. Okay, that's all that. So then the last thing we got to talk about is just business stuff, um, just stuff that's going on in Jen Lucas Designs. Um, so that's real quick. Don't have too much here to show you. Um, and so the first thing is that my patrons got this pattern, um, this month. So I always talk about it here when a new one comes out. Every other month I do exclusive patterns for my Patreon page. Um, and so the people that are members of my Patreon page get to sort of help me, uh, choose the design elements. And so, um, we, I did a shawl this time that had lace and then you can't really see it from this far back, but there's some like texture in here too, with like just some different stitches and there's some garter stitch in the lace here. Um, and so people, you have to be a member of my Patreon page for two months prior. So people that were members of the page in January and February got this pattern in March. And so now I'm starting on the pattern for May. Um, and so there's still a couple days left in March. So to get the May pattern, you'd have to be a member for March and April. So you'd have to join before the end of the month. Um, and I always have a link to this information down below. Um, and so this month, or for my May pattern, we're doing um, like a wrap stole, like a wide scarf <laughs> um, pattern. That's what my patrons chose. And then um, as far as sort of stitch patterns, um, it was slip stitches and texture. So actually this one's going to have no lace in it at all. And so I'm just starting with this simple slip stitch pattern here, and then it's going to move into like a textured pattern. So um, the yarn here is Gale's Art, and it's a merino yak silk blend. So very, very pretty. So that's the Patreon pattern I've been working on. And then speaking of um, Patreon, um, my pattern from September of last year is now available on Ravelry. And so uh, in September, originally it was just, I don't remember if it was just going to be the mitts or just the hat, um, whichever one got voted on, I made, and I also made it really fast because it was very small. And so, um, I had some time and my patrons had asked for it. So I actually did, um, like made a matching set. So I have mitts here, they're fingerless mitts and they're written for multiple sizes. And then I have the hat, which is also written for multiple sizes. So those are available on Ravelry now, and I'll leave a link to those down below. And then the last thing is um, I have a new pattern that is out um, with Mono Del Uruguay, and they have a new collection called the Make It Now Collection, which is all um, pretty like simple, easy stitch patterns, um, things that are like sort of repetitive and very easy to make. Um, patterns that you can like memorize the stitch patterns and things like that. And so I have a new shawl out in the Make It Now collection with Manos del Uruguay. It's called the Momentito shawl. And um, I don't have it here because Manos del Uruguay has the sample, but I'll insert a couple pictures right here. So yeah, that's a really cute pattern. It's a bottom up short row shawl. I hadn't designed one of those in a while. Um, it was really, really fun to knit. I really, I, I enjoyed knitting it. I would make another one now maybe. Um, so I'll leave a link to that down below too. So I think that that's everything. Yeah. So definitely had a lot going on today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this coffee catch up and even though it's a little bit longer than usual, um, had lots to show you today. So that's it for me for today. So if you liked this video, don't forget to give it that thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos from me, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you want, you can hit the little bell there to um, turn on notifications to be notified whenever I upload a new video. And yeah, like I said down below, let me know what kind of books you're reading. I've been on a huge reading kick this month, so I'd love to know what you have been reading lately. So that's it for me. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Bye!